from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Cardinal Collins. This Mass is the Sarah Foundation of Canada Mass to pray for the intentions of the donors. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the generosity of the Sarah Foundation of Canada and the Sarah Canada Council, together with all 18 Canadian Sarah Clubs. Sarans are lay Catholics, men and women of all ages and from all walks of life, dedicated to promoting and affirming priestly and religious vocations. An important part of the Sarah Club mission is to pray for new and existing vocations to the priesthood. We thank all who use the Sarah Foundation of Canada Mass Cards for, and for your ongoing support for vocations to the priesthood and the consecrated religious life. Sarah fulfills an important function in the life of the church and I would be really happy if every diocese in Canada, if, there, if Sarah was present in each diocese. On this day of 1867, the British North America Act created Canada, and since July 1st, 1868, Canadians have gathered on this day to celebrate our country, which stretches from sea to sea to sea. We invite you to join us at the end of our Mass today for the Canadian National Anthem, which will be followed by the names of those remembered through a Sarah Foundation of Canada Mass Cards. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. As we prepare now to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Israel and for four, I will not revoke the punishment because they sell the righteous for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals. They who trample the head of the poor into the dust of the earth and push the afflicted out of the way. Father and son go into the same girl so that my holy name is profaned. They lay themselves down beside every altar on garments taken in pledge. And in the house of their God, they drink wine bought with fines they imposed. Yet I destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of cedars and who was as strong as oaks. I destroyed his fruit above and his roots beneath. Also, I brought you up out of the land of Egypt and led you 40 years in the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. So I will press you down in your place, just as a cart presses down when it is full of sheaves. Flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong shall not retain their strength nor shall the mighty save their lives. Those who handle the bow shall not stand, and those who are swift of foot shall not save themselves, nor shall those who ride horses save their lives. And those who are stout of heart among the mighty shall flee away naked in that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to recite my statutes or take my covenant on. 
give your mouth free rein for evil, and your tongue frames deceit. Remember this, you who never think of God. Mark this then, you who forget God, or I will tear you apart and there bring thanksgiving as their sacrifice honor me to those who go the right way i will show the salvation of god remember this you who never think of god The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus saw great crowds around him, he gave orders to go over to the other side. A scribe then approached him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is uh, very appropriate that by divine providence, I suppose, the readings today fit very much in with the uh, celebration of our National Feast Day, of our celebration of Confederation in our country, when we're called to think about the common good of, of our whole community. Because the first reading today speaks to us of, from the prophet Amos, of the need to live with justice in our hearts, that our society is one in which people are not simply seeking their own private good, but seeking the common good. If we seek our own personal good, we're going to have chaos in society. Me, me, me. We're going to worship the unholy trinity of me, myself, and I. There's no future in that. And very often in society, when people are all fighting one another, seeking their, to get ahead, uh, you know, it's, uh, everything is for myself, the whole community falls apart. But when we seek the common good, when we seek justice in our community, when we think of the most vulnerable, those who are of greatest need, I would think of people who are suffering in different ways in our society. We think of those who are most vulnerable, those who are uh, the, the child in the womb, those who are on the way towards being born, those who are the most vulnerable, or people at the other end of life, those who are suffering in various ways throughout life or are near the end of their life. These are the vulnerable. We think of the poor, the needy, those who are suffering. And those are the ones we need to think of. Get out of our own ego and move out and help them. That's what the prophet Amos calls us to do, to have that kind of vision of the common good. And if we seek the common good, then our own good will take care of itself. It will be fine, we will be all right. But if we seek our own good, me, 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 then no, it's not, not the way. As the Lord says in the Our Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's what we pray. Too often in our hearts we say, my kingdom come, my will be done. There's no future in that. That destroys the community and it destroys our own life. 
And if we are to live in a way in which the whole of our community flourishes and we within it and all of our brothers and sisters flourish, then we need ourselves to be people of focus and determination, to give ourselves heart, mind, and soul to the love of God and the love of neighbor. We can't be dithering. Dithering's not helpful. And we see, we see in the, uh, the gospel today, uh, two individuals who are coming to the Lord. And both of them are, are kind of dithering. They don't, they, they don't want to, to commit themselves completely. And unless we do that, we're not gonna be able to serve faithfully. And so we have the words come very easily. A scribe's approach said, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And then Jesus gives him some of the hard realities of what, what's meant by following him. Mm, he, he doesn't, that's not so, so good. And then another comes and says, Lord, let first me first go and bury my father. He's talking about waiting until his father is dead. And then at that point, sometime in the future, he will follow him. And uh, our Lord makes, not exactly a joke, but he makes a kind of a, a remark to kind of get to this man to say, no, wait, now is the time. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. That's what we hear of in the Hail Mary. And that's the way in which we need to live our life. To live the life in the present moment, to serve the Lord faithfully. That's what we're called to do. And not to be dithering about or giving excuses. It's very appropriate at the beginning of the reading of the Holy Gospel. We make the sign of the cross on our forehead that we may know these words. On our lips that we may speak them as in here, I will follow you oh, on our lips that we may speak them. But most important on our hearts that we will live them. That's what really matters. It must be that commitment to put into practice what we preach in what we believe that is really the heart and center of our life in Christ. So we pray that on this day in which we celebrate our country, we may not only seek that it might be a place of justice as the prophet Amos speaks of in the first reading, but seek that we as Christians might fully fulfill our mission to not only know our faith and proclaim our faith and our loyalty to Jesus, but to live it to the heart, to really act and to make put that faith into practice. May the Lord give us the grace to do that. And now we offer our prayers to Almighty God. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for the church throughout the world, especially wherever it is facing persecution. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. In our community prayer this month, we follow the lead of Pope Francis, who directs us to keep God's command to nurture and cherish creation. We pray for those who are working to protect all that is good in our common home, the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray uh, for an increase in vocations of those who respond to the call to the priesthood and to the religious life. And we pray that uh, Sarah, the Sarah Club will flourish in every diocese in our country. We pray to the Lord. Lord God. For all of those who are sick or who are suffering in any way, we pray to the Lord. Lord God. And for all of the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord God. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear these and all of our prayers, which we offer to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord God, be pleased to receive us and accept the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of all my sins. Lord Jesus. I pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice 
O God, who with the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant we pray that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels as with joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. They may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. At this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. We invite everyone in our community to join us now for O Canada, the Canadian National Anthem.
our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.